Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Welcome to the show. Today, we have Steve McLaughlin, the founder, CEO, and managing partner at FT Partners joining us. I have met Steve at Finnovate a long, long time ago. I think you were involved in some of our very early shows. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the podcast. Yeah, great to be doing it. Thanks for having me on. So for people who don't know about FT Partners, you guys are active as an investment bank in the fintech space. You've had a hand in a lot of extremely large transactions in the market. Can you start by just giving some background on what kind of work you and FT Partners do? Sure. Well, thank you for the opportunity here. So yeah, number one, we're an investment bank focused on fintech, like you said. And what that basically means is we help generally private companies, generally faster growing companies that are scaling, raise capital, and that's generally equity capital. That usually comes from private equity venture capital or strategic investors, or we work on M&A transactions, and that's typically sell-side M&A transactions. So we worked on some of the largest transactions in the space. In the insure tech space, we sold assurance to Prudential for $3.5 billion. Capital raising, we do all the time. We've raised all the money for Marketa and Avid Exchange since some of their very earliest rounds up until their multi-billion dollar companies. So we really have a life cycle approach to capital raising and then ultimately um, IPOs and M&A. So all around fintech on all continents, I say, other than Antarctica. And there's 160 of us around the world between San Francisco, New York, and London. It really is an impressive list of companies that you've worked with, that you've kind of found and nurtured. And I would encourage anybody to check out uh, the FT Partners webpage just to get a sense of the types of companies and the sheer volume scale of, of transactions that you guys do. But what I'd really like to to talk about today, you know, as you may have heard, we've been doing kind of a fintech in extraordinary times podcast series, talking to experts and analysts from across the fintech space. And one of the things that I've heard a few different people say was that they kind of expect fintech funding to be harder to get for startups. You know, that overall company valuation is going to drop, that VC capital will be more difficult to obtain. Does that line up with what you're seeing so far? I think there's sort of the yes side of that and the no side of that. I think, you know, certainly at the beginning of the COVID crisis with everyone going to work from home mode and people not really being used to doing transactions over Zoom and not being able to physically meet and really kind of socialize and bond with founders and CEOs, it certainly is putting a damper on things in the market out of the gates. I think now that we're sort of in a, as we're calling it, the new normal of, you know, when is COVID going to be over? Well, it's not really going to be over for quite some time. So there's going to be a slow, gradual, you know, return to quote unquote normalcy, uh, which basically means there's going to be a lot of transactions done over Zoom. Uh, We're already doing them ourselves. We're seeing them. People are adapting to that. And, you know, what we're really seeing in that environment is people are starting to get even a deeper bond with the company over Zoom because there's a lot of personal bonding There's a lot more team building uh, to some extent where you can get on the phone and not just have one person from the company, but you may get six or seven on the call and you can see their faces. So it goes from a a world where you have maybe one physical meeting and then you'd have 10 conference calls and now you're having 11 video calls, which in a lot of times is better. So the environment and the ability to do deals is actually okay right now and, and possibly even better to some extent. In terms of the overall environment for capital coming into companies, you know, the amount of capital is really quite large and it's sitting on the sidelines and it's ready to go. I think the question really is, you know, what are the investment opportunities and how well are the companies performing? And this is something that goes all across the map. We have clients right now that are up three, four, five, ten 10x from, you know, sort of the run rates a year ago due to COVID. A company called Open Exchange, which I've mentioned a couple of times lately, is doing video conferencing for financial services companies and running virtual conferences on a, a high tech basis. They're up 10x or more. A company like Marketa, who's doing all the payment processing for the card issuing side of companies like DoorDash and Instacart and Square and others, is up massively during this market. So you're seeing some of that stuff, and there's capital that's chasing those types of companies, let's just say. And then you've got things on the other end of the spectrum where companies are you know, maybe attacking certain parts of the travel market or SMB market where this is going to be a tougher sort of series of outcomes and everything in between. But investors will adjust 
their valuations up, they'll leave them the same, or they'll go down depending on how well the company is performing. So it really comes down to how well the company is performing, how they can articulate um, what their post-COVID world is going to be like and how realistic they are on valuation. And that's where we've really come to help some of the companies that really all those different stages, some companies that are really struggling, that need to think about how to position, how to get you know, get get capital in the company quickly, companies that are experiencing tremendous growth and companies that are kind of flat. So we're really seeing all of it and, um, you know, trying to help them all out. So, so maybe it sounds like, you know, to, to kind of summarize a little bit there, that, that it's not so much that capital is drying up. In fact, there actually is a lot of capital that's, that's kind of waiting for, you know, the right opportunity to come into. But, but maybe it's, it's not that the capital is dried up. It's more so that the grading rubric has become a lot harsher. That, you know, there's this kind of massive test, this hurdle, that unexpected roadblock, basically, that got thrown in front of everybody's path. And some companies are dealing really well with that. And some companies are turning that into opportunity and really growing significantly. And other companies, I think, have, have struggled to deal with that. And so you will see that there will be obviously you know, less people funding that type of technology for at least a little bit. But I think you know, if you look at it, actually founding a new startup, because this is, I think, one of those things where you know, for a healthy fintech ecosystem, I think there always has to be new startups coming into the ecosystem, you know, pushing incumbent companies. And I think startups are a great source of creativity. They kind of keep everybody honest. They keep bigger companies from getting lazy and complacent. And so you know, I, I look at that and think, you know, are there going to be startup companies in the fintech ecosystem in the same way that there have been? You know, will those companies find the funding that they need in order to push the industry forward? That, that's a really big concern of mine. I'd love to hear your thoughts there. I think if there's any space that's going to get continued capital and continued innovation, it's the early stage companies. These are the ones that are going to see the opportunity. They're going to see the holes in the system. They're going to see where the, the this, this massive push on digitalization is is really going to propel things forward at an even faster rate. So it would be great to be starting a company right now because I really, really do think the capital is out there. I've been personally meeting myself with you know, probably 10, 12, or 15 different seed and A stage companies that are purely focused on fintech or have a big fintech uh, focus. And they're all evaluating companies, funding companies, and actually raising fresh funds to do so. I just uh, spent a bunch of time with the Better Tomorrow Ventures guys who are pure fintech, doing a great job, or Vestigo. There's there's so many of these. And I think everyone truly believes the next Stripe or Square or Audian or you know Avid Exchange or Marketa are going to be created out of this environment. So those companies are really not encumbered with big burn rates and everything else. They'll be benefiting from lower advertising costs, you know, a great availability of talent cheaper real estate for sure, sure or no yeah. real estate if we're working from home. So I think it's a great time for both the companies and the investors to come together, which is, you know, I think a, a, the second thing I would say is you know, as far as uh, fintech itself, I mean, nothing that's happened with the pandemic has done anything to debt, the massive, massive fintech world. If anything, if you listen to the CEO of PayPal or Microsoft, you know, the shift to digital has basically gone, you know, two, three, four, five years forward in the last two to three months. So to all the fintech CEOs and founders out there, you know, put your head down and go crank because the space is huge, as I'm sure you know. And for all the founders out there that are looking at, you know, maybe a, a flat round or an inside round or a down round, you know, try to be realistic, take the money and be there and build for the future because the space is going to get bigger and better. And even if it's a little tough, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So hopefully everyone's surviving and thriving out there. Yeah, well, I mean, certainly there's a thinning of the herd that's already becoming apparent. And, and you could even make the case that maybe this was something that was due, that we'd gotten to a point in the fintech ecosystem where there were too many companies who were getting funding amounts at a level that really wasn't sustainable and that, you know, this kind of uh, correction was necessary and that potentially this you know, COVID situation has just uh, accelerated that process because I think, you know, th- this is actually similar in some ways to what we saw in, you know, early... 2009, 2010, when there were a lot of companies entering the space and they did it with a lot less capital than what we saw in the, the second half of the last decade. And I think that you know, if you look at the companies that came out of that time period, there were some amazing companies and they all sort of had to start at a stage which basically meant they had to prove themselves more consistently. They had to deliver revenue more quickly. And I think companies who are able to, you know, to your point, who are able to demonstrate that revenue coming in, who are able to demonstrate the size of the opportunity will continue to find capital but there may be some companies in the middle ground who have been funded on sort of this future promise that promise might not be coming to fruition in the way that they had hoped and so those companies think will find it difficult so we're coming up on the end of our time here but i do just want to 
end by asking, you know, if there are any particular aspects of fintech or any elements that you think are really poised to be successful as we look forward and we kind of start to come to a new normal, are there any particular areas that you're hearing a lot of buzz around or you're seeing companies that are getting traction? Obviously, some really high profile cases that you just mentioned, but I'm curious more on that sort of startup side, any you know, areas that look particularly interesting. Sure. I think three areas I'll mention very, very quickly. One would be just generally open banking. You know, so the proliferation of openness to the banking system, connecting fintechs, connecting consumers, connecting other constituents into each other is is a huge, huge area. You know, look at the Plaid deal, you look at all the companies like Finicity and a whole slew of other ones. So I think open banking. The second would just be broadly data and AI. And I think you're going to see more and more of that over the next uh, five to 10 years. And Probably last but not least is the fraud space. You know, with all the electronic transactions, account openings, digitization, I think that space, um, when I say fraud, I mean fraud, authentication, ID, identity, all that kind of space. I think you're going to see an enormous amount of uh, activity and going forward. And there's the bell. And there's the bell. Yeah, no, perfect. I think that's great. You know, open banking, data, AI, fraud, certainly themes that we've seen a lot of on the Finnovate stage. I, I think you're right. I think we will expect to see a lot more of them coming forward as the situation continues to develop. And there are obviously really amazing and innovative things happening in each of those three areas. So, um, well, Steve, thank you very much again for taking the time to chat with me. It's a real pleasure. And I look forward to uh, touching base with you again a little bit down the road and to see how things continue to develop. So uh, thanks again. Greg, thank you very much. And thanks to Finnovate. Take care. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>